What's wrong with counting calories to lose weight? I'll tell you what's wrong. It works until it doesn't allow me to explain. But before I explain, make sure you hit subscribe, hit that little bell so you get notified when we post new videos, hopefully on a weekly basis. All right, counting calories to lose weight. Is this a good idea? Well, let's figure it out together. You see, a calorie is a unit of energy found in food. And the experts, you know, like those food scientists that work for the big corporations, those are the ones that lie to you while they're telling you the truth right in front of your face. Keep listening and you'll understand what I mean. You see, those experts say it doesn't matter where your calories come from. You could get your calories from steak, an apple, a Gatorade, a soda, our highly profitable ultra processed foods, wherever you get your calories from, losing weight has nothing to do with where the calories come from. It has to do with how many calories you're getting. And they're absolutely correct, but they're really not. So here's what I mean. You can go onto Google and calculate your total energy expenditure. You could simply just go and find your basal metabolic rate. How many calories do you need to stay the exact weight you're at right now? Let's just say that number is 2000 calories day to stay the same weight you are. But if you want to lose weight, then all you have to do is go at a 10, 15, or a 20% deficit over a period of time, you will lose weight. And that's true. You will. So let's just say you decide to go at a 15% deficit from 2000 calories. So now instead of 2000 calories a day to stay the same weight you're at, you're going to lose weight by eating 1700 calories a day. And then you attempt to do that. And after a few days, you realize that 1700 calories, not that bad. You can do this. You can do this for the long haul. So you start doing it. Some time passes you lose weight. This is the honeymoon period. You've gone through this before. You know what it's like. You feel good. Your energy is good. You're starting to look good. People are noticing. They're saying something. Your confidence goes up. All the things. And then there's a point where you're, let's just say, halfway to your goal. And there's a plateau. You stop losing weight. Matter of fact, you might even have gained a pound or two. You start examining what you ate, saying, how could this be? Why did I stop losing weight? Why am I even gaining a pound or two? All right, I'm going to go to a further deficit. 1,700 calories, not so bad. Why don't I just go to 15? 1500 calories or 1400 calories and you do that and you start to lose some more weight and you're trucking along and things are going well you're losing weight not as rapidly as initially but it's still working and then all of a sudden you hit another plateau you're still not at your target you still didn't meet your goal and after all you meet your goals so you cut your calories even further. You go into a further deficit. Maybe you go down to 1,250 calories and then you continue to lose weight and then it stops. And then you go down to 900 calories a day. And then finally, voila, at 900 calories a day, you finally hit your goal. Maybe you lost 25, 30 pounds. There's certainly reason to celebrate. But what you didn't take into account is that every time you hit that plateau and had to lower your calories in order to continue to lose weight, your body did something that your car just can't do. Let me give you the analogy. If your car gets 20 miles per gallon and all of a sudden gas becomes more scarce, your car will not suddenly start getting 30 miles per gallon. That would be an increase in efficiency that would require your car to be super intelligent. Now, your body is super intelligent. God or 600 million years of evolution or both created a machine that could become more and more efficient the more scarce the fuel became. So if fuel becomes scarce, you increase your efficiency. You'll go from 20 miles per gallon to 30 miles per gallon to 50 miles per gallon. Your engine can do that. Your car engine cannot do that. So now you're at your target weight and you can maintain that target weight at 900 calories a day. And 900 calories a day is just ridiculous. No one can sustain that. After all, you hit your target, right? Even if you went to 1500 calories a day, surely that wouldn't result in you gaining all of your weight back because after all, you're nowhere near the 2000 plus calories that got you into this mess to begin with. So you start eating 1500 calories a day and you're feeling hungry, but you're okay. You can do 1500 calories a day, but wait a minute, that scale is going up. It's climbing. I'm gaining the weight I lost. I'm gaining it all back at 1500 calories a day, which is not a lot of food. I'm eating like a bird. After all, 1,500 calories is still a 500 calorie deficit from where you started. But no, it's actually a 600 calorie surplus of calories. And this is why the show The Biggest Loser and every single diet known to man fails. It fails us all. In order for this to not happen, in order for you to win at the weight loss game, there are some things you have to understand. First, it's important to understand that your body is not a machine. It is innately intelligent. It adapts to changing circumstances. Your body will always maximize efficiency. 
Second, we have to recognize that the food we eat is not only for energy to burn. Food is also for structure. All of the proteins, all of the cells in your body replace themselves. You'll go through 400 pounds of skin in your lifetime in the shower. You will replace every single red blood cell you have between 90 and 120 days. You will have a completely new digestive system every three weeks to three months. So every cell in your body must be replaced. And what are your cells made out of? It's made out of protein and fat. So the food you eat, the proteins and the fats you eat get converted into the structure of your body, not just the energy you burn to move around. Now of the three kinds of food that we can use for energy, two of them can be used for structure and energy. Only one one of them is used purely for energy, and that's carbohydrates. The structure of your body does not include carbohydrates for the most part. Virtually all of the carbohydrate you eat will be converted into energy or stored as energy. Carbohydrates fit into that true four calories per gram equation. Third, the efficiency that your body experienced during all of those months of cutting calories. That efficiency was controlled and coordinated by messengers in your blood and in your body called hormones. These hormones go into overdrive. They will do whatever it takes to make your body function more efficiently. That's what they're supposed to do. So can we do something to reduce the drive towards efficiency? The answer is yes, we can. It first requires us to understand how these hormones interact with each other and your body anytime we are feasting, fasting, sleeping, exercising, or digesting. This will ultimately impact our body composition. When your goal is weight loss, it's difficult to put the whole picture together. But when your goal is to improve your health, then putting all of those pieces together is a lot easier, makes a whole lot more sense, and the weight loss becomes a wonderful side effect of improving your health. Stay tuned to this channel, subscribe, make sure you sign up for the notifications and share with your friends so we can continue this conversation in the videos to come.